The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. It's a sunshiny day today. A little chilly out there with the wind, but sun is shining, and that's good. So a couple of announcements for us this morning, and the first one I'll highlight is the one that, that is on the screen as well. Um, that is that if any of you would like to, this is the opportunity for you to donate any um, clean and used um, winter jackets, toques, gloves, and socks for Street Alive Mission. And we have the, the boxes in the Narthex, so you can just bring them with you. Many of you know that um, Canada sometimes mirror our neighbors to the south when it comes to Black Friday. So Black Friday is something that happens in the States. It's that sort of the first, uh, the, the, the Friday of Thanksgiving, I believe, um, but that's coming, and there's a lot of sales going on. And Canada usually does exactly the same thing. We have our stores with a bunch of sales going on, so perhaps if you, if you have um, some extra funds laying around or that you don't know what to do with, go to one of the stores that sells the, the winter clothing that has it on sale. It's a great opportunity for us to, to do that and support um, this mission, especially since things will be coming on sale. So. Why not take opportunity, uh, advantage of that? Um, also, we are doing some collections for the food bank, and once again, you can also bring your donations for that, and again, the boxes are um, in the Northex for it. Um, then next Sunday, Isabel will be leading the service for us, and that is uh, the first Sunday in Advent, and during Advent, we will be looking at a series called the hymns that we sing, or the carols we sing during Advent, and the first one um, that Isabel will lead for us is on joy to the world. Um, so that's next week. Um, then, uh, the choir, if any of you would like to come and join them the, on, on Thursday evening at 7 o'clock, at 7 o'clock, you're, <laughs> you're in the sanctuary, you're more than welcome to do so, singing Christmas carols and, and songs, and then on the 5th of December, um, we will have sort of a hymn sing here in the church in the afternoon. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, then... I have some, 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 an update for you. So as you know, um, in previous Sundays I've mentioned to you that Reverend Rees was waiting to get this letter from the embassy that he should send him his passport. Well, that letter has now come, and um, so he has sent them his passport, couriered it to them, to the High Commission in Cape Town, and so we hope that they um, issue their visas more expediently than they do the other stuff. So um, we keep your fingers crossed that um, he will be with us um, very soon. So I, I, hope, I hope that next Sunday Isabel can give you another update. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and, and him in our prayers. Um, those are all my announcements for today, unless there's anything else for us. Oh. Okay. My friends, I'm going to invite you to please stand and join me in our responsive call to worship. <coughs> O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King of all of us. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands has formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our King. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pastures, and sheep of his hand. My friends, let us join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have will to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, our Lord and King. Grant that the people of earth, now divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together until the, under the gentle and loving rule of Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. My friends, our opening hymn this morning is number 267, number 267, Rejoice, the Lord is King.
My friends, we know that nothing is able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Let us now in freedom confess the wrong that we have done. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have raised Jesus from death to life and you have crowned him Lord of all. We confess today that we have not bowed before him or acknowledge his rule in our lives. We have gone along with the ways of the world and we have failed to give him glory. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us and raise us from sin that we may be your faithful people obeying the commands of Jesus Christ who rules the world and is head of the church, his body. For in his name we pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My friends, hear now these words of assurance that comes to us from John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him may not perish, but may have a life everlasting. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the whole world might be saved through him. And as God's forgiven people who has received God's mercy and God's love and God's grace, how can we show our thanksgiving to God, my friends? We can do so by living our lives according to the will and purpose that God has for us. And here now these words that Jesus spoke to us many years ago from Matthew chapter 22 when he said, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Amen and amen.
my friends for the walk through the Bible. So um, we are progressing through the, the poetry and wisdom literature. And um, next week we're changing gears. Next week and during Advent we can actually look at an Advent story um, that is told um, by the writing and illustrations from one colleague of mine, Reverend Susan Mattison. And so, again, Isabel will share that with you um, next week, and then every Sunday we, we continue with that story, an Advent story. Um, so today with Proverbs, we, we get to Proverbs, sort of the third book in the wisdom and poetry literature. Now, quite often, um, Proverbs and, and all the sayings there is attributed to King Solomon. And we all know Solomon is the, the wise king, right? When um, God came to him and said, you can choose riches, you can choose this, you can choose that. Uh, what did Solomon did? He asked for wisdom. And so he's the, made that um, choice. Now, throughout um, Proverbs, it's actually, it's also one of those books that I would encourage you to, um, one evening, one afternoon, read through it. And, and it, it's, it's quite easy to start at chapter one, read all the way through it. Um, it it's, it's very easy to do it. Um, and Proverbs has about 900 plus different sayings, Proverbs. Um, and I think we all use Proverbs in our daily lives, and of course, I'm drawing a blank, and I can't remember any of them right now that we use in our daily lives. Um, but I'm sure you know many Proverbs. But anyways, so one of them that, is in, that I thought is actually very well, good for us today as we think back about our series that we had on the fruit of the Spirit and to encourage us in, in that still is from Proverbs 27, verse 19. It says, as water reflects the face, so the heart reflects the person. And as we all know that, I mean, a person, you yourself cannot see what your face looks like unless you look into something else, then you see what other people see. And I think it just reminds us that our actions, what we do, what we say, uh, that is what, who we are inside. And um, I think it encourages us, at least for me, um, to take that, that whole, everything which we said about the fruit of the Spirit and what they are, and how do we cultivate them in our lives so that when people look at us, what is reflected to them, what is that mirror image they see is that it is the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of God reflected um, in our lives. And Proverbs actually has, and it deals with all kinds of topics. Um, there's not a topic in this world almost um, that we won't find a, a piece of wisdom in, in Proverbs about it. Whether it is relationships, whether it is your own personal life and decisions you have to make, whether it is about money, whether it is about um, your, your, your marriage, everything, whether it's about children, whether it's about parents, all of it is in Proverbs and it is really some very good wisdom in there um, for us. So I do encourage you this week, perhaps um, read a chapter or two of Proverbs and let that word sink in and see how they can enrich your very own life. Um, we're going to sing a song. Uh, Levinia, are you going to join me for this one? That would be great. That would be great. Sorry to put you on the spot there. Uh, I actually have to have the words with me as well. So I have my phone with me, not because I'm texting someone. Uh, it's just because the bulletin of the church is on it. and. Um, I usually have a tongue twister in this song, but before we start playing, so the way the song works <coughs> is um, it's, a, it's spelling. We're going to spell. And um, it starts with I am a C, I am a C, H, I am a C, H, R, I, S, T, I, A, N, so Christian. Um, and it goes through that. And then when we get to the second verse, so we can just go to the next slide there for us. In the second verse, we add ip to every consonant. Okay? So, ip to every consonant. So, all of a sudden, ch becomes kip hip. So, we're going to say, I am a kip, dum, dum, I am a kip hip, I am a kip hip, rip, I sip, dip, I ain't hip. Okay? The third verse, we add on to every consonant. They all stay the same. Consonants, on. So, it's going to be, I am a kong, I am a kong hong, I am a kong hong rong, I song tong, I ain't long. Okay? And then the fourth verse, good news, we're back to the original, which is I am a C, I am a CH. Here's the twist to all of it. For each verse, we speed up. Okay, there we go. Let's go back to the first one. C, I am a CH, I am a CH, R I S T. R-I-S-T in my H-E-A-R-T and I will L-I-V-E-E-T-E-R-N-A-L-L-Y I am a kip I am a kip hip I am a kip hip rip I 
My friends, let us join our hearts together as we ask God for the guidance during the reading and proclamation of the word. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of all creation, for you have taught us by your word. And now we pray, open our hearts to your Holy Spirit and lead us on the paths of Christ, your Son. All praise and glory be yours forevermore. reading from John 18. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is the truth? The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Thanks be to God. Thank you for sharing the reading with us. My friends, about four years ago now, I walked the Camino de Santiago. And when you do walk 800 kilometers on an ever popular, ever increasing popular path, you meet quite a few people. Now, I did not go out of my way at the time to talk to people. However, every now and then I had a good chat with a pilgrim whether it was a Canadian from the East Coast or the West Coast, or an Irishman, Australian, South Africans, Dutch, German, and quite a few South Koreans. Eventually, a question was asked, though, during those conversations, and it would be, so why are you walking the Camino? I would say that everyone, and that would include the self-proclaimed atheists, was walking the Camino for an underlying purpose. And that purpose 
was a search for truth. Even if a person couldn't name it at the time, after a few minutes of conversation, a few open-ended questions, and active listening, lo and behold, the theme of searching for truth was revealed. Now, is it surprising that people are seeking or are looking for some kind of truth? I would argue that it is a very human thing for us to do. We, we like to know, we like to explore, uh, we like to ask questions, we, we like to be pragmatic, uh, we like to be realists, we like to search for truth. We also like to question truth. After all, it seems that there are so many truths out there. Is there one truth? This might actually be a very daring question. Is there one truth in our day and age? Because we are told that there are many truths out there. And I think there are times when we would much rather want to talk about or reflect on something else because what if we offend someone when we say there is only one truth? Regardless of the many truths out there, I think it's good for us to remember, and I am quoting the X-Files here because I'm a bit of an X-Files fan, and um, Mulder quite often says this to Scully, the truth is out there. Within the Christian faith, how do we handle the question regarding the truth? Do we shy away from this question or do we claim the question? Strangely enough, when, when I thought about this and I looked at our reading for today, um, and I think about the quest for truth that's out there, another scripture passage comes to mind. Um, it's one I'm sure you're familiar with. It is from John 14, verse 6, when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Should it then really be such a struggle for us, for people to find truth? This also reminds me of a pilgrimage. As we walk with Jesus Christ in life, we see that He is the way. And while we are on the way, we do find God's truths revealed to us, and God's truths leads us to life eternal. Nonetheless, within our world today, within our very own lives, we do see that eternal struggle with a question that Pilate asked Jesus. What? What is truth? The reading from John's Gospel reminds us that there are two kingdoms. A worldly kingdom and a heavenly kingdom. And we can see the contrast between them this morning as Jesus, the King of Heaven, stands in front of Pilate, the governor. Jesus brought in as a criminal in contrast to Pilate who has the power of Rome behind him. Jesus might not have been seen as a worthy fellow, perhaps a nice example of a spiritual sort. However, Jesus commanded no armies. Jesus did not decide who got promoted. Jesus didn't decide who got rich. Jesus might have been a very nice religious figure, but Pilate thought Jesus is not someone to take all that seriously. This was the thinking. Yet Jesus insisted that he is a king and that he has a kingdom. It is not of this world, Jesus said, because his kingdom is a spiritual one. See, my friends, Jesus reigns with spiritual and heavenly authority. It means that he reigns over the soul through spiritual power and heavenly principles. So, we have the earthly or the worldly kingdom and the heavenly kingdom. Perhaps it is here that we have a difficulty as we search for the truth. Let me ask this question. Since we have this dichotomy between the two kingdoms, and the question is there on the screen as well. Does it mean that while we must respect earthly powers, that we can afford to ignore Jesus' kingdom? Perhaps the second question 
also needs to be asked. Since Jesus' kingdom is a heavenly kingdom, does that mean it has nothing to do with people who choose not to be religious? When I walked the community of Santiago, I quickly realized how different Spain is from Canada. I'm, I'm an avid coffee drinker. I'm, if I drink five coffees a day, something is wrong. I must be sick because I drink 10 to 12. I am a heavy coffee drinker. In Spain, I missed my bottomless coffee during lunch and dinner. I quickly learned that you know, asking for three coffees cost you 10 euros, not just three euros. I also had to adjust to siesta time in Spain, which meant nothing. Nothing happened between 1.30 and 4.30 in the afternoon. And it also took me quite a while to get used to eating dinner at 8 p.m. because I eat dinner between 5 and 6 and sometimes nowadays as early as 4.45. There are differences between the two countries, between the two kingdoms, if you like. There are also differences between the values of the earthly and the heavenly kingdoms. Through the actions of Pilate and the religious leaders, we become aware of, the, of, of, the, of these values. And the first one we see is pragmatism. The first value we see with um, Pilate and the religious leaders is the worldly value of pragmatism. Our world believes in and practices whatever works. And we see this in, in the behavior of the crowd that day, right? Things weren't going well for them because Pilate demanded an actual charge rather than rubber stamping everything. Hearing that, they said to Pilate, this man must let our nation and forbade us to give tribute to Caesar and said that he himself is, is Christ the king. Out of pragmatism, practicality, they told two lies. Because Jesus has done nothing to subvert the nation of Israel, and in regard to paying taxes to Caesar, their earlier attempt to trap Jesus failed. It failed miserably when Jesus held up a coin um, with the inscription of Caesar on it and said, Give unto Caesar the things that belong to Caesar, and give unto God that which be belongs to God, that are God's. So why did they bring those false charges? Because they thought it expedient to lie. They thought the scheme would work. It didn't, because Pilate acquitted Jesus of those charges. So they changed their complaint to the true charge. We have a law. He must die because he made himself the son of God. And this was no concern of Pilate. So they, choose, they, they, they chose to, to change their tune once again with a threat. They say to Pilate, if you release Jesus, then you, Pilate, are no friend of Caesar. What has happened here is that the people laid aside justice completely, operating by pure expediency, which often is the way of our world. We see the same values in Pilate's actions. He began with care and propriety. They needed a formal charge. They needed a real trial. He began the procedure in keeping with the Roman tradition of law and justice. But when the pressure began to mount upon him, he too responded with blatant expediency. He declared Jesus innocent, but instead of letting him go, he turned to the custom of letting one prisoner go free during Passover. The choice between Jesus and the notorious insurrectionist Barabbas, who was let go. To please the crowd, the injustice was compounded as, as Jesus ordered Jesus to re, as Pilate ordered Jesus to receive 40 lashes and to be crucified. All this, my friends, seems very self-serving, both from the perspective of the crowd and Pilate. The second worldly value we see in this passage is relativism. Jesus was explaining the nature of his kingdom. I have come to the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. We hear Pilate's response. What is truth? What is truth? 
This might be the motto of our pragmatic relativistic age. That might be true for you, but it's not true for me. Have you heard that saying before? Might be true for you, but it's not true for me. This saying assumes that there are more than one truth or that there is no real truth at all. As Christians, we are also told that it is okay to have our own personal beliefs as long as we do not insist that they are true for everyone. Perhaps today, one of the greatest offenses as a Christian is to claim that Christ is not merely a savior, but that Christ is the only savior, the only way and truth and life. Pragmatism and relativism go together in our world today, 21st century, as it did 2000 years ago. Self-serving pragmatism cannot afford the idea of absolute truth, because truth then becomes an inconvenience if our highest aim is only to serve our own apparent good. To the kingdom of this world, the truth is nothing. Did you notice the results of pragmatism and relativism in our passage, in our reading? They produce hypocrisy. The crowd was eager to hand over the sinless Son of God with trumped-up charges and false testimony while being careful not to enter Pilate's house so they couldn't defile themselves for Passover. Injustice. With everyone out for his own interest group, with everyone treating truth as something to be manipulated, it was impossible for justice to prevail. And the third one, cruelty. Even though Pilate acquitted Jesus of all charges, Jesus was still savagely beaten and then crucified. My friends, Christ, Jesus Christ, is a different king and his kingdom is not of this world. The New Testament constantly warned us as Christians about the pragmatism and relativism of the world. In 1 John 2, verse 15 through 17, we read, Do not love the world or the things in the world. For all that is in the world is not of the Father, but it is from the world. Jesus' reign is not of these values. His reign is truth. He said, I came into the world to bear witness to the truth. His truth is not something to be twisted and manipulated. Jesus' truth is not the truth of pragmatism. It is not the truth of relativism. Jesus has the truth because he is truth. He is the great reality that shapes all things, the world that become flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus' truth is therefore not constructed. It is not discovered partially and tentatively like some new theory. Jesus' truth is the truth that was always, is, and will always be. The truth that Jesus brings into the world from God. And it is revealed to us as light into darkness. Nonetheless, nonetheless, we know that our postmodern culture and society challenges the possibility of truth, or even our ability to confidently know truth. We say, what matters is knowing the truth. Society challenges us by saying, how can you claim to know the truth? Jesus' words to Pilate offer a response to this challenge. See, according to Jesus, believers receive truth not by superior intellect, investigative efforts, or experience, but revelation, divine revelation. His purpose for coming to the world was to give truth by means of revelation. He says in the reading we had this morning, for this purpose I came into the world, to bear witness to the truth. So what does it mean for us today? My friends, it means that Scripture, the Bible, is the truth. It's the truth revealed in Scripture. And the truth revealed in Scripture is Jesus himself, his person, and his work. And that is why he says, everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Jesus also commissioned the apostles to provide the truth of God, to provide the truth to God's people. We have this today in the form of written revelation, which is the letters of the apostles. 
And these letters are not merely opinions and views of individuals with their human limitations, but they are Christ's words given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. After all, Jesus said, The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I have said. Jesus himself provided the written revelation of truth through the Holy Spirit's inspiration of the apostolic witness. Lastly, my friends, it means that when we read God's word in faith, that Jesus reveals to us the truth to our minds by the current, by the present ministry of the Holy Spirit. On the Camino de Santiago, the way, there are many signs that reveal truths to pilgrims. Mostly, which direction do you need to walk in? Often, how many kilometers, and also which town is just over the next hill. You also find that from time to time, that these signs have been decorated by other people. For whatever reason, this act of decorating the sign seemed the pragmatic thing to do for an individual. At times, these added truths were distracting. At times it made the sign invisible because you were distracted by all the other little things. Yet underneath all of that, the truth remained. There are many voices in our culture, in our society, and so often we hear, perhaps even have used these terms, that might be true for you, but it's not true for me. What is the truth? Are we looking for the truth? Are we yearning to know what is truth? My friends, Jesus promised this. If you abide in my word, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, everyone is of the truth, listens to my voice. Now the question remains. Are we, are we willing to come and listen to God's truth, the truth? Amen and amen. My friends, let us join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we come before you today, we do so with hearts yearning to learn. Hearts who want to know more about the truth you reveal to us. We know that oftentimes we, we can find it difficult um, in life, especially when our way of thinking is challenged. All of us find it difficult, all the time. It's not easy for us to hear sometimes that there is something different out there. It's not always easy for us to know that we have thought about a concept not quite the right way, or that we can grow in it or change our perspective in it. We find it hard because instead of learning and trying to discover what something means, we become upset because now we are wrong. Instead of looking for learning opportunities, instead we become hard-headed because we believe we're wrong. Help us to change that attitude in our lives. Help us to change, to, to not just go from when we're challenged with something to become hard-headed and stubborn and have this attitude of, I'm not wrong, everyone else is, but to have an attitude of learning. To have an attitude of, of inquiry. An attitude of opening our minds. We so often talk in our society, oh Lord, that we have to be open-minded, that, that we are open-minded, and yet, when it comes to your truth revealed through Scripture, all of a sudden, we become very close-minded. Very close-minded. Help us to truly be open-minded. Open-minded to, to the leading of your Holy Spirit. Open-minded to the words you spoke. Open-minded to the many teachings you have for us. Because we all know that so often our concepts and precepts that we have from what we learned and what we adapted in our own lives do not always serve us that well. If we think about our world today, we know there's still so many strife, so many fighting, so many ugliness going on. If we only adopt in our very lives as humanity 
the fruit of the Spirit and bear them to other people, our world would indeed be a very, very different place. Even if it's just the fruit of kindness. Because so often people are unkind and say unkind and do unkind things. Without a second thought, those words um, leave our mouths and it has done more damage than it does good. Help us, O oh Lord, to grow in kindness. Something that you ask us, something that you teach us, something that you show us in your word. We indeed pray that you will help us so that we open our hearts to the leading of your Holy Spirit even especially if it confronts us or is hard for us, so that we may change our lives for the better and so that we may reflect your image to other people in a world that there is so much strife going on, so much ugliness. Because why do we want to live in that when we can have things so much, so much better? We also bring to you today in prayer, O oh Lord, those who are going through a difficult time, whether it is grief, whether it is illness, whether it is conflict. May your calmness, may your presence, may your love and grace bring comfort. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, my friends, our hymn is number 358. There is a Redeemer, number 358. seconds um, so for our offering once again we, we do not uh, do the plates yet um, th during this time so the, the offering plates are at the back in the bulletin are also other ways that you can continue your support for St. Andrews and um, as uh, and again I would remind you that um, as opportunities arise during the week for um, items that go on sale for the winter clothing um, that would be a great time for us to pick some of those up and that we can also then um, share with um, uh, fellow brothers and sisters here in Lethbridge. My friends, our doxology is number 661, verse 1 and 2. We give thee but thine own.
Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for the many, many blessings that we have received from your hand. We especially give you thanks for the blessing of your revelation, the revelation, your revelation through your word, through the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit who is still with us today in our hearts to show us and teach us and help us on our everyday life. We pray that we will continue to absorb your blessings into our lives and to reflect your image to other people. We pray this in Jesus' name. My friends, our closing hymn is number 611 for all the saints. Number 611.
Thank you. 